Here we go then. It was always going to happen eventually. Hamilton and Verstappen fought hard for the lead on the first lap of the British Grand Prix, ultimately coming together with Max spearing off into the barrier and Lewis getting away reasonably unscathed and winning the race. Hamilton was given a 10 second time penalty for the collision, which hampered him slightly, but not enough to keep him from victory. So let's do our usual what happened, what the rules are, who's at fault, and does the punishment fit the crime within the framework of the rules and precedent? This video is sponsored by Omaze, which gives away unique prizes while donating money to charities and charities around the world. The prize on offer is a C8 Corvette Stingray, a car so rare that its 2020 and 2021 models are all completely sold out. It's loaded with all the features listed here, as well as a Z51 performance package, adjustable front lift with location memory so you can get into driveways and over speed bumps. 19 and 20 inch carbon flash wheels, a two spoke squared off racing wheel, fully digital head up display and a 14 speaker Bose sound system. The associated charity today is the 500 Festival, which generates funds in support of producing events and programs to bring positive impact to the city of Indianapolis and the state of Indiana. And donating $10 through Omaze enters you with the chance to win the really quite ridiculous prize I just mentioned. So for a chance to win an amazing car as well as supporting the 500 Festival, go to amaze.com cb and you can just click on the link in the description below. Thanks Amaze for sponsoring this video. So interestingly, for the first time, this race follows a sprint qualifying race the day before, in which Verstappen snatched the lead from Hamilton at the start, but Lewis appeared much stronger down the Wellington Strait and into the Brooklands Lafield complex. So Hamilton gets a run on Verstappen into Cops and goes for it around the outside. He's behind, so backs out, and Verstappen holds the lead for the rest of the sprint. But lessons learned for the race. So come lap one on Sunday, once again, Hamilton seems the stronger car, down the Wellington Strait and almost makes a move into Brooklands. He once again enters Woodcote a little wider with the aim of outpowering Verstappen down into Cops. He knows that if he doesn't get track position in this early fight, then Verstappen has the opportunity to control the race. We saw this already in the sprint. This time we have information about how the race might go. Now it's tricky to overtake here at Silverstone, but Hamilton does have a car advantage, the swell of the home crowd and, quite importantly, he is 33 points behind Verstappen at this point. And both he and Mercedes know they need to beat Max today to get the momentum back in their camp after five straight victories from Red Bull. So Hamilton takes a wider entry onto the old pit straight for better acceleration, and it works. By halfway down the straight, he's already caught Verstappen. Hamilton holds left as a very passive kind of dummy, and Verstappen moves across to defend the inside just as he did the day before. But surprise, this time Hamilton dives further inside, positioning his car in the narrow space between Verstappen and the wall. Verstappen then moves back across to the outside for a better line into Cops, giving Hamilton a bit more space. Hamilton also shuffles a bit towards the outside, as the more room the merrier for widening his own line through Cops to hold as much speed as possible. Then, as Verstappen turns in, Hamilton is still very much in the middle of the track. In fact, he's understeering at this point probably having gone in a little faster than he's really got the grip for. This would normally be fine as he could correct mid-corner, but not if there's a Red Bull already occupying that part of the track. Same matter can occupy some space. I'm still kicking. I must be on Broadway. <laughs> Hamilton then clips Verstappen's rear wheel, spinning him out and into the barrier where, luckily, he got away without injury. So, a lot of mess to clear up here then. Now initially, Hamilton said over the radio that he was ahead, but he never was. Now he corrects this over the radio to alongside, which he very much was at certain points. Hamilton was in fact about 80-90% to 90 alongside Verstappen at the corner entry, and probably about 70-80% to 80 alongside as they begin to turn in. But, Hamilton is on the inside, so will naturally have to break earlier and will have to go slower through Cops than Verstappen can manage bombing it around the outside. So, even if you are alongside-ish at the approach, it is very optimistic to assume you'll still be alongside through the corner. Which he wasn't, he fell back. Verstappen was able to hold noticeably more speed and moves his car from a position where his fronts and Hamilton's fronts are kind of aligned, to his rears being alongside Hamilton's fronts as they turn in. So did Verstappen just chop across Hamilton? Well, kind of, but I think he's slightly surprised Hamilton is still there, to be honest. But more on that in a second. Verstappen does indeed have a lot of space on his outside, and Hamilton also has a fair amount of space on his inside. So, I find it hard-pressed to say either driver didn't give the other any sort of room. 
I think Hamilton probably wanted to go in tighter, but with the loss of aero performance and hot tyres from hanging in Verstappen's wake, he had a little less grip than he needed, and instead of taking this line through Cops, he understeered out, never really threatening the apex of the corner at all. In hindsight, it's very clear Hamilton was never going to overtake Verstappen had they both got through cleanly, and if Hamilton had known it at this point, he probably would have backed out. But in real time, Hamilton had to try and Verstappen had to keep his foot down. Now remember, this is all happening incredibly quickly in the splits of splits of seconds while balancing a heavy sliding car at its limit while only being able to focus on one of the track ahead, your periphery or the mirrors at any one point. As a driver, you have to make instinctual decisions quickly and decisively. And honestly, for drivers of Max and Lewis's calibre, most of the time it works out. But not here. Penalty-wise, stewards had just handed out four penalties for drivers on the inside, boffing the car on the outside. Three in Austria, as already discussed in other videos, and one to Russell in the sprint for understeering into science. Now in this case, the stewards cited the Code of Conduct article in the International Sporting Code, uh, specifically paragraph 2D, which talks about causing a collision and the appearance of a lack of control over the car, which both apply to an extent. This is slightly different to the Austria penalties, which cited 2B, which regards allowed overtaking manoeuvres, but is identical to the rule they used against Russell in the sprint. Now one thing we do have to note is Verstappen's steering wheel movements, which are subtle but interesting. As they both turn in, Verstappen begins to steer into the corner. As he seems to spot Hamilton, he hesitates very momentarily and backs out, but within a fraction of a second he recommits to taking his line through the corner. Now this does suggest he knows Hamilton is there, but has decided to claim the corner, while leaving room of course, and giving Lewis the decision to back out. This is quite similar to how they excluded Schumacher from the 97 championship, noting that when he crashed into Villeneuve, he made two steering wheel movements, the second after knowing there was a car on the inside. I mean, this isn't anything heinous like that, but it's still interesting to note. There is something about the mentality of, okay, I'm going to take this corner and you, the other driver, have to decide if we're going to have an accident. Both drivers do it often. It's bold, it's risky, but to a certain extent, that is how you're going to win championships and the stewards have to decide if this gauntlet throwing is done safely. For me, on the balance of it being somewhere between being completely Hamilton's fault or completely Verstappen's fault, I would still say it falls in the racing incident bracket, with more of the blame towards Hamilton. Now, the size of this bracket will vary from person to person, or if you're the FIA, depending on how you want to define appropriate driving conduct. Either driver could have avoided an accident by being a little bit better, but they are fighting for a title here, and you can't blame them really for not giving a millimetre to the other. Now, a couple of extra things quickly. Um, some people say Hamilton wasn't really punished as he still won the race. Uh, this isn't true, of course, as he, he definitely got a 10 second penalty. He won despite that. And there's an argument to be made over whether this was punishment enough, but this argument must be centred over the incident itself, not over where people ultimately finished. You know, stewards never punish in this way. And Max said Lewis's penalty didn't help Red Bull at all, but again, that's never what penalties are about. They only punish the rule breaker and never help the aggrieved party, no matter how frustrating it may be. If you're blocked in qualifying or run off the road in the race, the stewards can never give you that time back. As to the scale of the penalty, watching the race, I wouldn't have been surprised if Hamilton had got a drive through. Then I also wouldn't have been that surprised if he'd just got five second penalty. I don't think he made the worst possible driving error, nor do I think he made no error at all. He clearly made a mistake that tipped another driver out. I do think it makes sense to scale penalties based on the danger of the corner though. Not that I'm saying that happened here, but mistakes into cops carry far more danger than mistakes into turn four at Austria. So if stewards want to give beefier penalties in more dangerous locations to send a message that drivers need to manage their risk appropriately, then yes, I'm all for this which is why I wouldn't have been surprised if they gave him a drive through or something. So it seems we're through the looking glass here. The dynamic of the championship has changed and the gloves are off. The gap in the standings has closed up, so neither can now be complacent, and I fully expect neither of them to give an inch to the other going forward. <laughs>